QuickBooks Online 2022 Invoice Selling Inventory. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Geek Rate Guitars practice file. We set up with our 30 day free trial, holding control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. in the business view as opposed to the accounting view. If you wanted to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top and switching to the accounting view. We will be toggling back and forth between the business and accounting view either here or by jumping over to the sample file, which in essence is in the accounting view to practice the navigations in both of those views. Let's open a few tabs up top by right clicking on the tab up top, duplicate that tab, go back to the tab to the left, right click on it again, and duplicate it again back to the tab to the left again right click on it and duplicate again we're going to open up some reports let's take a look at where the reports are located in the accounting view which is located in the reports which is quite straightforward over here in the accounting view a little less straightforward but not too bad back in the business view the reports are located in the business overview section And then they're in the reports here. So then they are in the reports. And then we're going to go down to the favorite couple of reports that we want to look at, which of course are the balance sheet first, the balance sheet. We're going to close up the hamburger and do a range change from 010122 to 123122. And then that's not 1231, 123122. And then run that report, run it. And then we're going to go to the tab to the right and let's open up the P and L here, go into the business overview, the P and L, the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Doing the range change up top here from 010122 to 123122 and running that one, closing up the hamburger, nothing's in it thus far. That's, that's what we would expect at this point. We haven't had anything in there yet. We're going to the third tab now, and we're going to go into the business view again. We want to get used to using that trial balance because it's a great tool to be working with as you do data input, as we will see. So I'm going to just type in trial balance to find it because they stuffed it way at the bottom of the reports, which isn't really fair because it's a super important report. I'm going to close up the hamburger. And then do a range change up top from 010122 to 123122 and run that one. There we have it. Now we're going to be entering an invoice, standard kind of data input process to enter the invoice. But if you have inventory involved and you're tracking the inventory in the system, as well as having sales tax, it's actually a quite complex transaction to do the data input for the invoice. So it's, it's something that you want to be able to have someone to do the data input quickly, but something that you want to make sure that you're setting up properly so that the data input can be done quickly and so that uh, the financial statements will be properly impacted. And there's a lot of things going on that we'll, we'll talk about with the invoice. So let's go to the first tab. We set up in the prior presentations our inventory items. So we should be ready to go with our invoice. So we'll go to the uh, drop down up top. Now note, we're not going to be entering the invoice that was kind of linked to the purchasing process that we've seen in the prior presentations where we had a purchase order and then we paid for the inventory that we received and we had a couple customers that we were going to be invoicing for that particular purchase that we were tracking through the process. We will get to them, but right now we're just going to do a standard invoice. So we're just imagining a standard sale of the guitar and we're going to receive the payment in the future. We're going to collect on it in the future. Therefore, invoice means accounts receivable is going to be going up. We're going to type in Anderson Guitars, which is a customer we have already been working with before. Anderson Guitars is then going to populate for us because it is a customer we've been working with before. We've got the billing address. The terms are automatic at this point in time. We're going to keep the net 30 at the terms. That means if the due date or the date of the invoice, which we're going to say is 01, 1622 that means the due date will be 30 days out at 21522 and the invoice number populating location of sale is here that's going to help us with the sales tax calculation 
And then we're going to go on down and say that our things that we're selling, we're going to sell some ELP guitars, ELPs. And those are Epiphone Les Pauls. We're going to say that we're going to sell five of those, five of the Les Pauls, and that would be at $500 each. That's the sales price, not the cost. So when we entered the purchase order, I believe we had like 400 was driven there. Notice the item knows the difference between what we're selling them for and what we're purchasing them for driven by the item. So then we've got the 2,500, it's gonna be subject to the sales tax. So the next item that we're gonna have here, we're gonna say that we're gonna sell some EPRs, which is gonna be the uh, Epiphone Rivieras. So we're going to say that we're selling one of those, let's say, at the 550 sales price populated by the item that we have set up. And it is also a taxable item. So that looks good. It's doing that properly, which is nice. And then we've got the EPSH. And that's going to be then the Epiphone Semi Hollow Body. Let's sell one of those. We're going to say at $400. It's also subject to the sales tax. So scrolling down, what is this going to do when we actually report it? So when we report this, then it, because it's an invoice, and when you see invoice, you think accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is going up by the full amount, including the sales tax of the 3777.75. But the sales are only going to be going up by the uh, 3450. The difference of the sales tax is going to go to the payable account. Now, I'm actually going to change the sales tax because I want to make it a generic problem and just make a generic 5% sales tax here. So I'm going to change the sales tax just to a generic 5%. And you could do so by going in here, overriding this amount. And then I'm just going to say the rate is going to be 5% and then confirm. It's going to say, well, why? And I'm going to say, because it's a practice problem. That's why, because I want to make a generic practice problem. Just just do it, man. And so now it's going to be 362250. So again, the sales tax is calculated by the location, but 5% I'm just going to make a generic type of problem in the US sales tax is going to differ from state to state, locale to locale. Okay, so that means that the uh, invoice is going up by 3,622.50, sales is going up by 3,550. And then the payable is going up by the 1,000, I mean, the $172.50. Notice we're not having sales increase by the amount of the sales tax and then recording an expense related to the tax expense because that would indicate that the sales, or the expense is our business expense. And in reality, we're imagining the situation is that we are just the tool that the government is using to collect the sales tax that they're trying to impose on the purchaser. And therefore it's not income to us, even though we're collecting on it because we have to then pay it to the government. And in theory, it's, it's basically the tax from the government directly to the customer, you can think of it as, and we're just the tool that he has to collect on it, right? We're the, we've been made the tax collector. So it's not gonna increase revenue and we're not gonna get an expense for it, it goes directly to the payable account, doesn't hit the income statement. And then we've got the accounts receive, the inventory is gonna go down by an amount not driven by anything on the invoice, but known by the items because we set up the items and the perpetual inventory system, cost of goods sold and expense related to us selling the inventory is going to go up, which is an expense account. And the sub accounts related to the customer will be impacted as well, tracking the accounts receivable by customer and the sub account for the inventory tracking inventory, not only by dollar amount, but by unit. Okay, so let's post it and check all that out. We're gonna say, let's save and close that and see if that is indeed what happens. And this is really a good idea. Every time you post a transaction to go to your financial statements, see what the impact is on them. And the major two financial statements, of course, will be the balance sheet and the income statement. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the trial balance because it is the balance sheet on top of the income statement. You have just one report that you can practice drilling back down onto the source documents in the accounts. But for now, let's start with the balance sheet. So I'm gonna hold down control, I'm gonna scroll up just a bit and the accounts receivable should have going up. So let's drill down on the AR accounts receivable and drill down on the 362250. There's the invoice just as it should be. And then that's the total amount that 362250 closing that back out and going back then to our balance sheet. The other side is going to be in essence on the income statement. 
Let's jump on over to the next tab because that's where our income statement is located. Run it to refresh it. We should actually have some activity in it now, which is exciting. There's the 3450. The 3450, notice it breaks it out for each line item in here. Although all three of them are on the same invoice, that 3450 there is not the amount including sales tax, but only the amount that we basically charged our sales, not including the sales tax. The difference, closing this back out, scrolling back up, going back to our income statement or the PNL, going back to the tab to the left to the balance sheet is on the balance sheet account, scrolling down to the liabilities area. So then, then they put it under other current liabilities. You would think they would put it under sales tax payable, but they'd make an account by who you're paying. And in California, we're paying the California Department of Tax and Fees and so on, blah, blah, blah. So there's the, <laughs> the 17250 and the sales tax. It's the only thing there, so we don't really need to drill down on it. And then we've got the inventory, which is an asset account, which is going down, going up to the inventory, going up to the inventory to see how it went down. So we'll go into it and then we've got the invoices down here. So there are the invoices. It put them in line item by line item. It went down by these amounts, which aren't actually on the invoice. Cause if I drill down to the invoice, we see that the amounts shown on it are the sales amounts not the not the uh, cost amounts so that's because uh, we're not going to show it to the inventory inven invoice because we're going to give that to the customer but the system knows what the cost amounts are and are decreasing in accordance with the cost amounts so we're going to close that back out so then i'm going to go back on up top again let's go back to our our financial statement and jump over to the to the income statement again <laughs> And then the cost of goods sold is the other side of us selling the those items. So here's the other side of the inventory items over here for the sale item. And again, if I drill down on these, these are not the items that are actually on the invoice, but driven by the invoice. Now you might ask the question, you might say, hey, look, I only see three line items here. And if I close this out, I'm seeing four line items here for that one invoice. Why do I have four line items when there's only three on the actual invoice? And you'll see that here we have the Epiphone Les Paul was broken out into two lines as opposed to it being on one line in the invoice. And I believe that's because of the inventory tracking system that is being used in the system. They're using first in, first out. So although for this circumstance, the cost is the same. We didn't have a change in price. They're trying to apply the first in first out and to determine which of the guitars that we're selling and the flow assumption. And I believe that's the difference or why they broke this out into basically two line items, just in case you're wondering about that. So let's go back up top and go back then to our profit and loss. And then let's jump back on over to the first tab and now let's take a look at the sub reports for the accounts receivable. So let's go into an accounts receivable sub report. I'm going to go to the tab to the right. I'm going to right click on it and duplicate this tab. And so we're going to open another report that's going to be broken out in terms of the accounts receivable by who owes us the money. And we're going to go then to the reports on the left hand side to do so. Let's close up the hamburger. Let's go into the who owes you reports. And I just want not an aging report, but just the customer balance. Let's do a detail, customer balance detail report. And then this is looks good. So if I scroll down, there's Anderson uh, for the invoices, two invoices. One is the beginning balance. There's the new invoice, the total amount of the receivables at the 24, 122, 50, which ties out to the, to the balance sheet, hopefully. And that looks good. Let's also take a look at the sub report for inventory breaking it out by both unit and price. So I'm going to right click on the tab to the right again and open up another one. Hopefully my browser and my computer can handle this. It's an old computer. Be patient with it. Don't get mad at the computer. It's thinking. It's thinking. So let's go into the report here and let's see if we can get an inventory report. <clears throat> inventory valuation summary. Let's check that out if we could. 
So there we have it. And so now this is what we have uh, thus far in terms of our inventory items and the quantity and the dollar amount then adding up to the 44,180, uh, which should tie out to the balance sheet as well in terms of the balance sheet for the inventory 44,180. And of course, if we went to the first tab and we took a look at what I would call like the customer center for Mr. Anderson, which is in the get paid and pay area. If you were in the accounting view, you're talking the sales area. And then I'm gonna go into the customer information. We can then take a look at our customer in the get paid section of the business view. And then we're gonna say, let's close up the hamburger and go into Mr. Anderson activity. Mr. Anderson has, we've got, there's the, there's the invoice that we've put in place there as well. And we're hoping we're going to receive a payment at some point in the future. Wow. That was fun. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. Let's, we'll do it again. Here we go. Let's go to the, we're, this time we're going to, we're going to use the trial balance to track the information on this invoice. So I'm going to hit another plus button up top plus button. And we're going to say invoice. Let's make another invoice. And this one then we're going to say is for the customer. Let's, I think we got a new cut. No, this is going to be the same customer. Jones Guitar. So we've done business with Jones before. Jones are good people. We trust them. So we'll just do business with Jones here. Guitars. Terms, net 30. So let's put the date on the 17th this time. And that means 30 days out would be on 216 when we expect to get paid by that point. Invoice number populating automatically, same location. And then what are we selling down here? Mr. Jones wants the GI USA. That's going to be a Gibson USA. He wants how many of those? One of those. So that pulls in the sales price at the 380. Sales tax is implemented. No problem. And then we got the ELP, one of our faves, one of our best sellers, the Epiphone Les Paul. We're going to have eight of those that we're going to sell at $500 each. That comes out to 4000 so that we get a total down here of the 4380. Uh, They're all subject to the sales tax. Notice sometimes I have to kind of click down here to, to get the sales tax to calculate. So just be aware of that. You might have to uh, click and, and again, if you're zoomed in, then the, and it's messing stuff up. I'm at one, two, five, and it's working well. It's working well. They're getting a lot better at it. But if it's messing stuff up, you got to log out and go back into it, and it should be good. Okay. So what? So now I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust the sales tax for my generic problem to five percent. Why? Because generic problem. That's why. Generic problem five percent. So I'm just gonna change it to five percent here. That'll be uh, two nineteen confirm and then it's going to ask me why because i said so quickbooks that's why and then we're going to say close it <clears throat> okay so there it is so then what's going to happen well it's an invoice so the accounts receivable it's good to think through this as you enter the data input form so you can kind of get a, an understanding of not just the data input but what's the impact in the financial statement that typically gives you more value within a company allows you then to fix problems when problems happen that are a bit more complex so we're going to say okay accounts receivable is going to go up by the 4,599, including the sales tax. The other side is going to go to revenue of the 4,380, not including the sales tax. The difference of the sales tax, the 219, is going to go to not an income statement account, but a balance sheet account, a payable that we're going to have to pay to the government, the sales tax payable, which they put in terms of the name of the vendor for some reason. We also know that the inventory is going to be going down by an amount that's not on the actual form here and the cost of goods sold is going to be going up but the form knows about this or quickbooks knows about it because of the items and the way that we have set up the items the sub ledgers will also be affected with regards to the accounts receivable breaking it out by who owes us the money as well as the inventory breaking it out by unit as well as cost so let's go down and then save it and close it check that out this time we'll do it the faster way by going to the trusty trial balance over here which is basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement. It's like this tab way over like the third to last tab. I got a lot of tabs. You got a kind of a lot of tabs open. It's hard to, it's hard to tell what's going on, <clears throat> but that's okay. Here we go. Accounts receivable, the 20,500. If I drill down on that, then we've got invoice number two. There's the 4599 for Jones Guitars right there. 
drilling down on it. That's the total amount at the bottom, the bottom line, including the sales tax on the invoice. So that we're going to close that out. The four seven. That's going to be. Hold on a second. That was the full amount there, right? Let's go back into it one more time. The four five nine nine at the bottom line. The four five nine nine. It adjusted the sales tax again. It tried to change my override, I think. But four five nine nine. Save it and close it. <clears throat> that's what it should be. So be careful of that if it tries to change your change your override and you're working with the practice problem. And then I'm going to go back up top and go back then. And then the other side is going to be on the income statement, which is on the same form because we're in the trustee trial balance. So the balance sheet stops down here in the equity area. And then we've got the income statement line right there. So we can go right into it and then scroll down. We're looking on here and put it in two separate line items because those are the two line items on the income statement going into it. Let's see if it does that funny thing trying to mess up my it does it did it again does it save but it doesn't save it so it tries to change it like automatically when i go in there but i'm not saving the change so then i'm just going to close out uh but anyways that's at the 4380 4380 so that is good and then i'm going to go back up top <clears throat> and say the difference is going to be in the sales tax so the sales tax table is in the liability area. So we got assets and then liabilities. And then this thing, that's who we pay. It's in there. So if I go into that one, we've got the sales tax payable that it broke out into the three line items here, which I, if I drill down on it, it's going to try to change it. But don't let it do it. Don't let it fool you. So if I go down, it tries to change it, but it doesn't save it. So if I go in here, I said, I told you thing. I told you that I overrode this to 5%. Why? Because I said so, and then close it. So that's going to be an irritation in our practice problem. But there's the 219 on the sales tax. I'm going to close that out. I don't think it's saving it if you, if you change it or not when you drill down on it. And then I'm going to go back on over. And the next item is going to be in the inventory. Inventory goes down. Assets going down drilling down on that one holding control scrolling down a little bit so we can see it this was invoice number two or 1002 got two line items here those amounts are not actually going to be on the invoice because the invoice uh, is only showing the sales price not the cost but the, that amount is known by the items in the invoice so we're going to close that back out the other side of that scrolling back up is on the income statement in the cost of the goods that are sold cost of goods sold down below here it is it's going to be in there scrolling into that one and there we have there we have that those items as well going back up top going back up top and back then to our trial balance let's also check the sub ledger for accounts receivable it's now at the 28 7 21 50. if i go to the tab to the right uh, that's is this the right one? Yeah, <clears throat> customer balance summary. Let's make sure it's been run it, run it again. And so this one was for Jones. Jones, there it is. There it is. The totals adding up to that twenty-eight uh, seven twenty-one fifty. That should tie out to the trial balance. There it is. Inventory. Let's check that to the sub ledger report. Going to the right sub ledger report we have currently if we run it again let's make sure it's fresh make sure it's fresh 40 you got to squeeze the fruit and see if it indents or so i'm not i don't know how to do that i'm not i but anyways forty thousand six seven six. going back then we've got the forty thousand six seven six. so that looks good <clears throat> if i was to go to the income statement notice the impact on the income statement if we refresh this report running it is the income that we sold it for that's the amount we often see as the sales price when we ring something up say at the grocery store but the perpetual inventory system is also recording the cost so the net impact is is going to be the difference between the two for the two invoices we have now processed 1566 in this case if we go back to the first tab also note that you can track this information and we expect to be paid in the future and you might track it in the business overview area which if you were in 
the accounting view would be under the sales and customers. If you're in this view, you would be in the, I'm sorry, not the business overview, the get paid and paid area <laughs> and the customers. And then you could go into Jones Guitars and you can see now we've got these invoices from Jones Guitars here. You also might want to just search for your open invoices, which is no longer in the same area in the business view, but rather in the bookkeeping area down here and in the transactions up top. And you would then go to the sales transactions. And then I can sort by the open invoices scrolling down and saying, let's go down and filter the transactions by invoices and possibly the open ones are the ones I'd be concerned with. And there's our invoices. These are the three beginning balance invoices that were put in place and the two that we just made here. If you were in the other view, the accounting view, that same area is located under the sales tab next to like the customer center. You can kind of think of it as, and then the transactions <clears throat> are here. So they're, they're, they're in the same, they're both there under both views, but it's just where's QuickBooks, you know, they're A-B testing what people like, I think. that's so. So that's good for them, good for them. So we're gonna go back on over to the trial balance. This is where we stand at this point in time. If your numbers, if you're working along with us and your numbers line up, great. If they don't, try changing the date range because it's often a date issue. And then you can drill down if there's any problems to the source documents to see if you can uh, better assess the problem. And then at the end of each of these sections, we'll try to go into the transaction detail list which is another way we can kind of diagnose any differences.